Yo, up here. What? I'm a demon. You get a wish. What do you mean, wish? That's not how demons work. Forget about it. Anything your hearts desire. Infinite money. Infinite life. Infinite mana. So, what would you like? Uh, just anything? Like, I can make a choice? Oh no, I have it. Yes, yes. I want for Modern Horizons never to exist. Yes. Tamagotchi for lethal. Wait, you said Tamagotchi and lethal in the same sentence? Sure. <laughs> this is the best. Jamie, Jamie, you won't believe this. This is so great. Dude, where have you been? We gotta get going. Record the feature match. Feature match? Wait, Wait, the modern one. I yeah. brought the experimental thing that won the Pro Tour. Modern won the Pro Tour? Oh, this is unbelievable. I love Let's it. Let's get going. Welcome to the Card Market Feature Match, where we play decks that you submitted in the comments. And while you're down there submitting deck lists, uh, please also subscribe because it does help the channel a ton. Today, we're playing Modern. Uh, are you excited? Yeah, we're playing Modern. I, this is, this is, you can't believe how awesome it is. We're playing Modern, but without Modern Horizons 1 and 2, like with all oh, Rugged Lands and Solitudes and Sagas and all of those things, they don't Ooh. exist. What are you doing? Right, you see, they don't exist. They don't have a clue about what's it like. So it's gonna do be you, great. Do you, you just wanna reshoot this thing? No, 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 no. Okay, everything is fine. You and me, we, we got it. We, we got it. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. This is a crappy end. Let's go. This is crazy. Nobody has an idea that Modern Horizons ever existed. I come from a world where you had rock advance and solitudes and all of the stuff messing up your game. Think about Omna. There's no Omna. So we're just gonna play fair and easy magic without Modern Horizons. And the deck I chose is actually something a little bit unfair because we're using lands to make two mana. We're playing Eldrazi. Yes, we play Eldrazi Temple to make two mana, and then Thought Not Seer, Reality Smasher, even Endbringer, and then some red green shenanigans like Mana Makers and Blood Prayer. The goal of the deck is quite easy play some mana, play Eldrazi, play some interaction, smash them down. Easy game. So, Modern is in a great spot right now, and one of the top tier decks that I always wanted to try out is Esper Mentor. The deck obviously focuses around Monastery Mentor, but it also plays Ledger Shredder as a creature, both of which easily take over the game if left unchecked. You can then use the best Reanimation spell probably printed in the last like five years, Can't Stay Away, to trade up in mana by reanimating something that costs three for only two mana and even flashing it back, just making all the value in the world. The rest of the deck is basically just the best Esper interactive spells, you know, removal, card draw, and some counter spells to keep the Mentor engine running, and I'm excited to feel what makes this deck powerful. Jamin. Yeah? I'm so happy you cannot start with Ragavan turn one. Dude. No? Karizev costs two. No, Ragavan. Ah, never mind. I forgot. It's okay. Good stuff. Higher? Are you? Higher? Yeah, sure. Good. An eight! <laughs> Isn't it exciting? <laughs> uh, that's fine. fine. You can start. Yeah, but honestly, I mean, I don't think in modern it matters much who goes first. Ah, uh, yes, that's true, that's true. Like, but I'll make the best out of going first. Okay. I'll make the best out of it. All right, this looks keepable. I like this. There's so many cards I haven't seen in a long time. My starting hand is a little thin. We have four lands and one bird, but we do have an obligator and a thought not and two temples. So any Eldrazi we draw, we can bust out. I think this is on the closer side on the draw, but far away from my game, so we just keep. This hand's awesome. It's got Thoughtseize on turn one to check out what Toffle's up to, and then on turn two, I can read ahead to mill myself and hopefully find a reanimation target for turn three. I'll play, I guess I'll play a Mishra's Bobble first. Okay. And sack it to take a look at your top card. Rude. Put that back. And then I'll take two. Down to 18. And another two. Two foxes you. Down to 16. That's actually quite good. My hand is a little light. Oh yeah, I see, I see. Alright. Um, I'll take the thought not here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my turn. Yes, sir. Draw. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna start out with a Conclusion Forest. 
take one and play Bird of Paradise. Makes sense, makes sense. And go to 19. Yep. And it's your turn. I'll enter. I'll draw. I'll play an island. Drawing Drown in the dock makes it much easier for me to uh, fatal push the Birds of Paradise because I have another big removal spell lined up. And cast a new card, Founding of the Third Path from Dominaria. Mm -hmm. Starts on one, I won't read ahead. And using it, I will cast a fatal push on the Birds of Paradise. Fatally dead. Fatally dead, can I, can I ask you a question? <laughs> sure. How do you fatal push a bird? <laughs> you can push it, it just flies <laughs> over it. <laughs> it just realized it can fly and just flew away. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. After Jamin thoughts using my cards, I only have an obligator, but I also know that Jamin knows that I have it. And I think this makes a difference of casting it on turn two or not. So I will try to pressure him down, even though that might get him closer to something like Death Shadow, which he might as well run. Like, there's a lot of life loss going on on his side. Draw. And since you technically already know the card in my hand, I will play a tempo, take one for the Obligator. Yep. And then attack you for three. And you go. I'll untap, I'll upkeep and I will draw. So this will take up. I will mill myself, mill myself for four. One, two, three, four. That's not what I wanted to see. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a third land to play, which is annoying. Uh, so I have to leave it at casting a ledger shredder. Wait. And just passing the turn. Draw, and I'll offer you a trade. You'll offer a trade, huh? Sure, I'll block. Nice. Mm. We'll play a meta reshaper. Okay. And a tapped raging repeat. And go. I'll untap. I'll draw. <laughs> this is really awkward. Uh, this will tick up to three. Yeah. And. It doesn't say I may cast the copy until end of turn. I have to cast it right now. Yeah, so it doesn't get revolt. It doesn't get revolt at all. Because this only leaves the battlefield after three. Yes. That's annoying. Flashing back a two mana spell with Founding of the Third Path here is really slow because it doesn't advance my board state. Um, and I can't take too much time against an Eldrazi deck. There might be reality smashers coming soon. So I think I'm going to flash back Thoughtseize. I'll flash back the Thoughtseize targeting you. And I will show you my glorious hand of three yeah, lands. That's what I thought, but uh, everything else is kind of super awkward. Anyways, I'll deal myself even more damage. Tafel, I just realized <laughs> I milled my only swamp, which is really awkward. Ah, oh, that's really sad. <laughs> it's terribly sad. I guess I'll get a watery grave down to eight. Oh my, no, this is... Wait, aren't you planning to go down to like... Are you playing Death Shadow? Are you playing Death Shadow? Uh, maybe I am. I'll play a Founding of the Third Path. Cool. Cool. And then I'll play a Can't Stay Away. This card's so absurd. Two mana, and you get three mana worth of value out of your graveyard. But in this case, I only get two, because I only get a Ledger Shredder. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, that's my turn. This one doesn't even trigger, because like I've cast all these things before. Ugh. All right, draw. Yeah, no reality smasher, please. No, Toffel, no, no, that's, no, no, uh -uh. that's not a reality smasher. Mm -mm. All right, I will play an Eldrazi Temple. Yeah. And then I will make two for an Eldrazi. No, <laughs> no, uh-uh. Two for an Eldrazi. And you know what the color is. No. Just, <laughs> just for good measure. Toffel, that's, that's absurd. Empire <laughs> <laughs> Rams. I would like to go to that. I'm allowed to get lucky sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> it was a really fortunate draw. <laughs> go, to, go to a swamp in my graveyard. How's it the going? Thoughts. <laughs> Don't you know that sometimes 
You wish the world to be different, James. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that being powerful. It's great. Can yeah. I attack? You may. <laughs> I'll block. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> so you take five. Uh, three. And go to three. This game started so well, dude. Turn My hand was so bad. Yeah. Thoughtsies. <laughs> but you know, turn one. Thoughtsies. Turn to push the bird. Are you kidding? I I I thoughtsies. I I no. Nope. I'll draw. This goes up. Um, I'll mill myself for four. No, actually, I'll mill you for four. I want to see what you're playing. I'm playing. <laughs> Is, are we in the state of just? Hoping. Oh wow, lucky I didn't draw those. Yeah, I guess I'll pass the turn. <laughs> Let's type for <laughs> another <on> this. <laughs> Let's see. Oh wow, this is ridiculously bad. Uh, uh, all right, we'll play a forest, yep. activate the ravine, yep. and crack it. Yep. Chunk. Yeah, this one gets a counter. And then I take 7 12. Game 2. For sideboarding, I don't want to do too much. My deck's already packed with removal. I thought about Fulminator Mages, but you know, they can snipe a Raging Ravine and maybe in the early game get rid of an Eldrazi Temple, but I'm not convinced, um, even with Can't Stay Away. Instead, I'm only swapping out one Thoughtseize in my deck against a Murderous Cut from the sideboard because Murderous Cut is like the best removal spell in the deck, right? Like it's one mana, destroy any Eldrazi. And Thoughtseize I like better on the draw because on the play, I, I feel like I can already keep up with Toffled's pace somehow with removal. A sideboard is actually kind of interesting. I can bring in a lot of cards. We have the Relics, the Veil of Sunburst, and the Dismembers, all good candidates. And I'm not quite sure what to take out. All of those cards have a little bit of a different role, and they're pretty specific. Like the Veil of Sunburst, you need to kind of react to something, so it's not good if you don't have any pressure. The same as goes for the Relic, but the Relic has some different form of protection as it can save you from the Drowning Lock, but also prevent Jamin from flashing back some cards with the Saga or interact with some of the reanimate stuff. And of course, you don't want Jamie to keep all the creatures like Ledger Shredder and Monastery Mentor. So you kind of do want to have some removal, but you cannot bring all of these cards in because then you have to take out all the density, meaning probably your deck gets too thin and reactive, which is not what we want to achieve. So for right now, I'm trying out one Relic because you kind of really don't want to draw multiples of those, even though they cycle, but they cost mana and it's, it's kind of a little bit of a... A diminishing return effect here and we bring in two Veil of Summers because I'm not quite sure how great they are on the draw. There are certainly spots that are amazing but they're much better on the play so I only took out four cards and those four cards are gonna be Bloodbred Elves because they get much much worse with the Veil of Summers being in the deck. Tahoe after this absolutely disgusting win I'd like to go first. I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> Good luck. This hand looks pretty great. I mean, we have a bird, we have a temple, we have a green mana to cast everything, we have Veil, we have a Smasher, we... I, this has almost the potential to be a very good, perfect hand. This hand is fine, but it's really just that. There's no removal yet, there's no action yet, but there's a bunch of filler and like cycling stuff going on, so I'll keep it. I'll keep. That's good. Um, I'll once again start off with a Mishra's Bobble. Mm -hmm. And this time I'll target myself. This is a fine card to keep on top. I'll play an island mm -hmm. and pass the turn. And during your upkeep, I'll draw the card off the bobble. All right. Draw. Right away, we have the decision. Do we want to cast the bird or do we want to keep a Veil of Summer? And obviously the pattern play is to play a bird on turn one. But we're actually very restricted on a play on turn two because even though we have the access to four mana, we don't quite get to use it because we have nothing for it. So there's actually no real difference casting Birds of Paracast on the second turn, but maybe I draw something like a Thought on Sea and that would be quite punishing. On the other hand, since I drew another green card, I can play Birds of Paradise next turn and also have Veil vale Summer open in the same turn in case he wants to push the bird and something. So I think even though it looks a bit weird, we're gonna delay the bird for the next turn and keep on Veil vale of Summer. I uh, will play a forest and pass the turn. All right, I will take my draw, play a watery grave, so I go down to 18 and cast a letter. Yeah. 
Go ahead. All right, draw. Uh, well, I will take one. Okay. And cast my freshly drawn lightning bolt. Wow. Ball, which I may or may not have before. I will play Worlds of Paradise, sure. which I also drew, I promise. <laughs> and you go. I'll untap. I'll take my draw. And honestly, Tafel, you can scare me. I'll play a Polluted Delta and go down to 50. Mm -hmm. I'll get myself a Godless Shrine mm -hmm. and then uh, tap to... Play another Shredder. Can play another thre Shredder, you mm -hmm. called it. I'll tap one, cast the Consider. Mm -hmm. So before anything else happens, the Ledger Shredder triggers. Mm -hmm. I'll draw. I will discard another Watery Grave. So this one doesn't get a counter. And then I consider I will sure I'll keep this card on top this is fine luckily for me I don't need to play more than one spell and smack you for five yep down to ten you go I'll untap I'll take my draw all right let's let's see who can do this better um I'll cast the monster in the top. Mm -hmm. And followed up with a Mishra's Bobble, which will make my Ledger Shredder trigger once again. I'll take my draw. I will discard a Drown in the Lock, which puts a counter on my Shredder. I'll play a Tap Hallowed Fountain and pass the turn. Mm. That's strong. All right. Um, that is quite the defenses you have amassed, which I think. I think I'm gonna have to break at least for a little bit. I'm gonna take two. I'm gonna cast an obliterator. Yeah. And stealing the ledger shredder. Sure. And then before combat, I will cast an ancient stress trigger. I think. Sure. So we're gonna connive. And I think we have to get, ironically, not rid of anything because that's seven anyway. Right. Uh, so we'll discard a collusion forest. And then the ancient theory resolve. One, two, three, four, six. All right, all right. Man, another obligator? That's tough. And then we smack. Yeah, I guess I'll have to block here with yep. the monk token. Take seven, go to three. Yep, indeed. This dies. And I would like to end my turn. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to use this bauble on you. Check what's there. And then I'll go into my turn. Untap, draw for bauble, draw for my turn. Seeing the third obligator off the Mishra's bauble is very intimidating, so I have to make sure I'm prepared for a lot of threatened effects in a row. Tafel, I'll just pass the turn. I don't care. Go ahead. What? You just pass the turn? I pass the turn. Wow, that uh, is surprising. It kind of is, yes. <laughs> so what am I drawing? Lightning bolt would be funny. Lightning bolt would be hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's see. Ooh. I mean, we're not, not gonna cast it. So let me tell you what happens. We'll play an Obliterator and we target something when it's on the stack. Uh, namely, Mentor. All right, I guess uh, before that resolves, I should do some things because otherwise I won't get tokens. Um, I'll cast the Tainted Indulgence, mm -hmm. uh, triggering the Mentor, drawing two. I'll discard another Mentor, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll Murder's Cut, targeting the Reality Smasher. So first, there will be a Monk token. Yes. And an Electro Shredder trigger. Mm -hmm. So I draw, I guess I'll discard for a Mm-hmm. And then, then I have, have to, to discard. discard another card, which is a Can't Stay Away. All right, I'm not going to let that happen. I will cast a Veil of Summer oh. in response. In a Jeez, Tafel, you're an Eldrazi deck. You're supposed to play creatures and attack with them. Yeah, and that triggers yeah, your Yeah, trigger. I'll draw... Dude, I, I don't need these thought seasons. Why? I, Why I'm not? telling you. Uh, that resolves. I'll draw a card. Yeah, everything resolves. 
this part is unconcerned, and then your then trigger, the trigger is instinct. Yeah. Uh, I will pay for the mentor. Yeah. Attack with it. I'll jump with the mock token. Yeah. I don't want to kill my own mentor. Nope. And uh, then we're gonna end the turn. All right. That went okay-ish. You see, better than expected, you know? Kind of. On hindsight, I actually think I made a huge mistake. And I will lead you to my process of thinking to realize why I did that. Obviously, with the mentor in play, Jamin wants to cast a lot of spells. And it's kind of annoying to not know what we're dealing with here. So my idea was to target the mentor with the obligator. And then Jamin has to respond, making all the tokens right now. The problem is after the mentor made all the tokens, I don't have a good attack. I basically only can attack with the mentor killing one token. So the actual best play was to target the legislator because the legislator has flying can't be blocked so it needs to be dealt with by Jamin. That means he had to use a removal spell on his own creature but also maybe be a little bit inefficient to not make that many tokens. I still have another obligator in hand so I could do the same way of pushing the damage next turn. The only way to get rid of this is that for Jamin to kill his own legislator and that's huge because then the legislator also can attack me. It grows big enough to block all the reality smashes and this is a way better out come than just attacking with the mentor for one token. I'll draw. There's a million obligators in this game. There's one in your hand, there's one on the board, and one in the graveyard. We've got all of them. Well, one I sided out. Mmm, okay. <laughs> so, just... I can, I can stop playing around them afterwards. Alright. Um, I'm gonna first cast Can't Stay Away, targeting mm -hmm. my second Monastery Mentor, mm -hmm. getting another monk in the process beforehand, mm -hmm. and then I think I'll just have to pass the turn. Two cards, yes? Two cards. Draw. I think we don't have much to do, so I also don't want to really give you any more filtering for stuff. So we're going to play another Smasher and pass the turn. Take my draw. I'll cast a Founding of the Third Path, mm -hmm. which gets me some more tokens. Fairly convenient. And it starts on two, milling myself for four. One. Two, three, four. And then I'm gonna play a tapped Dark Slick Shores and pass the turn. Yeah, kind of the thing happened that I was afraid of that Jamin is just making too many tokens. And I don't think I get a better window of opportunity of stealing the Shredder and dealing as much damage as I can. So I'm gonna steal it here now and attack, hopefully kill one mentor in the process and then maybe stabilize. We still have some quite big creatures in our hand. So I hope we can play the longer game with the mentor being off the board, at least one of them. All right, we'll draw. After doing some math, I'm quite convinced this is the best shot I have. So we'll cast our Obligator, mm. targeting the Shredder. Yep. Which should have happened a long time ago. And you mean last turn? <laughs> the, the long time of last like turn? Like the, no, the... Oh, the first one should have targeted this one. Yeah, but, well, mistakes happen, we'll take this. Sure. Since I now have Letter Shredder, I will actually use it right away to let it connect. Draw. That seems rather useless. So it gets a counter. And then we're Ancient Spirits. One, two, three, mm -hmm. cool, four, five. I'm gonna show you an Endbringer. Okay. That goes into the graveyard, and then we can start the whole attacking thing. All right, um, yeah. Uh, your nose is very good, Topple. Your nose is extremely good. Uh, this is not a Drown in Sorrow, but it is a Drown in the Lock. Yeah. Uh, uh, gets me two more tokens. That works. This dies. You're still attacked by infinite. I mean, let's see about infinite. Um, these are the non-prowessed tokens, yeah. right? They just came into play. And then with the prowessed ones, I, there's no way for me to not take damage without losing a mentor, so I'm just gonna... I think I'm gonna do it like this. This is my box. One mentor dies and four tokens go and my board is crumbled. But at least they're dead-ish. So this mentor is dead. Right. Unfortunate, but hopefully necessary. And then it's your turn. 
It's unfortunate that Toffel gets the free Ledger Shredder trigger here, but I couldn't kill the Ledger Shredder while it was still under my control, because then Toffel just wouldn't have paid the mana to take control of it, and then had more mana at his disposal. Alright, I'll untap, and I will draw, and then finding the third path will trigger. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm kind of digging for action here, Toffel, so I'm gonna flashback the consider i'll pay one cast it first i'll get a monk token yeah check the top card of my library uh that seems good enough to me okay i'll play founding the third path which once again gives me a new monk where do you want it to be? I think I want it to start on three already. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna flash back another can stay away. Yeah. Uh, which will target another mentor. Yeah. But I first also get another monk token. Yeah. Yeah, and this is enough to block the reality smasher. And it's also enough to survive an obligator. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to four. I'll play a tapped Dark, Sli Dark Slick Shores mm -hmm. and pass the turn. All right, you know what time it is. <laughs> it's lightning bolt time. It's one time, baby. Uh, don't do it, Toffle. I didn't do it. Yeah, we're gonna cast a Blood Brain Elf. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh, there, there aren't many spells that cost less than four in your deck, right? No, well, there are some. There are some. There's Birds of Paradise. Apparently, there's Veil of Summer, you cheater. Uh, yeah, all right, let's, let's uh, look it let's up. See, yeah. One at a time. Yeah. You can't, you can't spoil yourself before me. You get a slam it. Okay, I'll also show it. <laughs> <laughs> you will show everyone, though. Oh, that's a very good card top. Uh, that's terrible. That's extremely good. I'm at four. It's so much value. All right, uh, we'll play a lap, and you go. All right, I'll untap, I'll upkeep, I'll take my draw. I will cast Tainted Indulgence. So I draw two and discard one. One monk, oh yeah, two monks actually. And then I'll play a Teferi, which gets me two more monks. Mm -hmm. And the Teferi will bounce your birds. Mm -hmm. And I'll attack you for 23. No, that works. I'll block with my shaper. Yeah. Just to see if Just I can. <laughs> <laughs> ah, painful mistakes. Game three. All right. Obviously, it's a little bit sad. We should have won that game. I mean, we should have in the sense that we could have won a game if we played correctly. But mistakes happen. We have to shake it off and focus on boarding and winning game three. So as I said, I want to have more Veils of Summer in the main deck when I play first. So I'm gonna bring in the fourth Veil of Summer. But I also realized I really want to have the maximum amount of removal spells because Ledger Shredder and Monastery Manji are so annoying. So we brought in one more Dismember, we brought in the last Veil of Summer, and I think also the Relic is kinda important to have as it has many crucial interactions with my and my opponent's graveyard. So I think on the play they're a little bit better because you can afford to spend the mana a little bit looser and I brought in the second one. For game three on the draw, I swap out the Thoughtseize I boarded out earlier for a Drown in the Lock from the main because Drown in the Lock takes time to get online and I, on the draw I really don't have time to do things. Thoughtseize becomes a much more efficient answer on the draw and hopefully this will do it. All right, I'll start. It's your first time on the play topple. Yes. Okay, okay. This hand is awesome. It's got the turn two Ledger Shredder, uh, followed up by the Mishra's Bauble. It's got Founding of the Third Path. It's got the best removal spell in Murderous Cut. I love it. My starting hand is absurd. Like, I, I'm not even sure you can make up a better hand. We have three mana, one of them is a temple. We have the Boreal Spirit for the mana advantage. We have Thoughtless here, we have the Special, and we even have the Relic just to protect against any of the shenanigans. Obviously, with the hand being the grand, you don't have many decision points if the game goes well. And I think, actually, in this situation, we could just go with the easy play of playing Smasher, attacking for nine, then dealing with everything opposed that comes up later. But actually, in this situation, we are fortunate enough 
to think about a different path. We don't have to play the Smasher. We could actually settle a little bit down, play both the Relic and the Veil of Summer in one turn, keeping Jamin from actually playing his turn perfectly, drawing cards with Thought Notes here, getting rid of the Smasher, and then apply the pressure one turn after because Jamin kind of has to skip the turn by trying to deal with my board. We're gonna start off with a Occlusion Forest, take one, and cast the Glorious Druid. Oh, that's a card I haven't seen in a while. You know what? Me neither. <laughs> I uh, go to 19 and pass the turn. I'll take my draw. I'll go with the Dark Slick Shores and I'll pass the turn. All right. Draw. Beautiful. We're going to play a temple. Oh, no. And the Thought Notes here. Yeah, all right. Uh, you get to see the goods. Uh, Sure. I'll take the Shredder. I mean, nothing really impresses me that much. Shredder is gone. I'll take my draw. I'll play the Dark Slick Shores and I'll play a Founding of the Third Path mm -hmm. on two, mm -hmm. milling myself. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. And then I'll play a Mishra's Bobble. And that's my turn. Hitting Fatal Push off the Founding is awesome because this way I get to kill the Thought Nuts here next turn. Um, but it also means I cannot draw the card off my Bauble anytime soon because I need to crack the Bauble during my draw step or during my main phase next turn to enable Revolt. Draw. I feel like we're just very satisfied with attacking for five. Yep. And you go to 15? 15. 15. And I will play another Capulsion Forest, play a Relic, and uh, use it on you. Use it on me, huh? I'll exile the founding of the third path. And then I'll pass the turn. Alright. Take my draw. And I'll target the Fatal Push. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna crack the relic, which is I guess I have to, in response, crack the bobble, targeting you, check your top card, and murderous cut the Thought Not Seer, exiling four cards from my graveyard. Yeah, which I would like to keep. And then go to 18. 18. Yeah, that resolves. Draw. Sure. So then the relic resolves. Uh, yeah, which means it also takes it. So you draw off the relic? Yes. Cool. <laughs> Founding resolves. I'll play a polluted delta and pass the turn. Alright. Draw. Mm, well, I don't think there's much to do. <laughs> 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 Look. I miss playing magic. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I uh, would like to attack. Sure. Down to six. Six. I'll play a Raging Ravine. End of turn, I'll fetch. Go to five. Yep. I'll get myself a Godless Shrine. No. 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 I'm I'm out of here. This. I'm not playing this game. No. <laughs> this is. Ah. And I'll head into my turn. Untap. Draw. And I'll pass the turn. Hmm. Draw. Yeah. I will play a forest. And um, we'll activate the ruin. Sure. Uh, you take two? No, you take one. One. 17. 17. Oops. Oh, he already wants to yeah, attack. Attack? To attack? Sure. Bam. I'll draw the block for the ruin. Hmm. Sad. And then I'll take ten. Boom! Good games. Man, Toffel, after that game, I wish there were some efficient answers to creatures in modern. Mm, yeah, be careful what you wish for. I mean, you kind of are in a point where you don't know, but it could be worse. It could be worse. It could be worse? Yeah, it could be worse. Like, imagine you have like a one mana 2-1 that uh, 
draws cards whenever he attacks and <laughs> gives you treasures and steals cards from your opponent and has dash. Just that's just fiction. All right. Imagine getting it. away from the memes. What's not a meme is this YouTube channel producing awesome content. And if you want to see more of that, then please do subscribe because it helps out the channel a ton. It helps justifying, you know, putting in the amount of effort that we currently do put in. Anything you want to add, Tafo? No, no, I think this world is perfect. I mean, the next thing they tell me is that this world has donuts that don't have calories. So I don't, I don't, this is great. You, You're a bit off today. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Ah, that win was easy. I love this world. Woo. All right, let's build a white black cleric deck I always wanted to build. Let's see, I need marsh flats and card market set. A hundred euros? No, that can't be right. Uh, wait, let me check the other fetch names. Polluted Delta. Two hundred euros? Oh no.